Let's talk about NASA's next big thing, the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. Think of it like Hubble's cooler, younger cousin who just showed up with way better gear. Roman's basically Hubble, but with a superpower, a massive, wide-angle lens like none other the world has ever seen. Same size mirror as Hubble, 2.4 meters, but instead of zooming into tiny patches of the sky, Roman captures huge areas all at once. We're talking nearly a hundred times more sky in a single shot. Imagine taking a group photo and suddenly realizing the whole city fits in the frame. That's Roman for you. It's also packing a 300 megapixel camera. You heard that right, 300. Your phone could never come even close. With that, it's going to map billions of galaxies, hunt for planets in the Milky Way, and help solve cosmic mysteries like dark energy and dark matter. And get this, it has a coronagraph too. Basically, sunglasses for telescopes. It blocks out starlight so we can actually see planets orbiting other stars. How cool is that? The plan is, and park it out by the L2 point, a sweet cosmic parking spot a million miles from Earth. So stay tuned, folks. I'm about to break down everything you need to know about this game-changing new telescope. Speaking of legends, let's talk about the woman behind the name, Nancy Grace Roman. If Hubble was the rock star, Nancy was the manager who booked the gigs, signed the deals, and fought to make sure the world noticed. They literally call her the mother of Hubble, and for good reason. Back in the 60s, NASA wasn't exactly hiring women to run things, but Nancy, with a PhD in astronomy, broke through the noise. She was NASA's very first chief of astronomy, and she pushed hard to make space telescopes a reality. Without her, no Hubble, no Roman telescope, none of it. She knew the power of science and knew how to sell it too. Nancy once said building Hubble would cost Americans the same as one movie ticket per year for 15 years of mind-blowing discoveries. Honestly, great deal. Roman's work didn't stop there. She helped launch other missions too, like the International Ultraviolet Explorer and the orbiting astronomical observatories. Space science owes her big. Sadly, she passed in 2018, but in 2020, NASA honored her by naming their next flagship telescope after her. And now that you know the story behind the name, stay tuned, we're about to dive into what this telescope is actually going to do and when it's going to do it. The Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope is set to launch on a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. That's the same rocket that once launched Elon Musk's red Tesla into space. Pretty cool, right? The launch will happen at Kennedy Space Center from the same launch pad used by Apollo astronauts. Right now, they're aiming for late 2026 or early 2027. Once it's up there, Roman won't just float around Earth. No, sir. It's heading about 1.5 million kilometers out to a place called Lagrange Point 2. Think of it like the universe's perfect parking spot. Gravity works just right there to keep Roman steady with a constant clear view of deep space. And if I'm not mistaken, even James Webb is stationed there. Plus, it stays cool, which is great for taking sharp infrared pictures of the universe. So what's on the to-do list for Roman? First, it's going after dark energy. This is the mysterious force that's making the universe expand faster than we expected. Roman will use three clever methods to help us figure out what's really going on. Next, Roman is going exoplanet hunting. It's going to stare deep into the center of our galaxy, searching for hidden planets. We're talking thousands of them, even ones that don't orbit stars at all. Roman also has a fancy tool called a coronagraph that lets it block out stars and directly photograph planets. Looks like the search for another Earth just got serious. All right, now let's talk about what's actually holding this whole mission together. Think of it like the frame of a car, or better yet, like an RV in space. That's basically what they call it, the spacecraft bus. It's the backbone of the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, and it's what makes the whole thing work. This bus isn't just some metal box floating around. It's packed with everything Roman needs to survive and do its job. We're talking power, cooling, steering, data storage, communication, the whole deal. NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center built this thing 
using designs from earlier missions like the Solar Dynamics Observatory, so they know what they're doing. The structure itself is a big, sturdy hexagon, about 13 feet wide and 6.5 feet tall, weighing around 3,800 kilograms. Inside, it's like a high-tech jungle gym. It's got over 50 miles of wires running through it. They designed it so teams could work on different parts at the same time, which helped keep the whole project on schedule even when parts were delayed. That's pretty smart. And here's the cool part. Roman solar panels don't just collect power, they also act like giant sunshades, keeping the telescope cool. I think you know by now that there's no way this thing is working if it gets too hot. But yeah, those panels pump out enough electricity to run everything, even after years of wear and tear. What about talking to Earth? Roman has a dish that sends back data at crazy speeds, up to 1.4 terabytes per day. Compare that to Hubble's tiny 3 gigabytes a day, and you'll see why this is a big deal. The antennas are tough too. They survived brutal tests, including crazy temperatures and violent shaking. Plus, NASA's already thinking about the future. That's why the Roman is built so it can be refueled by robots if needed. Basically, this thing's ready for the long haul. All right, now that we've talked about how Roman is built like a high-tech RV in space, let's get into the fun part, the gadgets on board that make all the discoveries possible. This thing isn't just floating up there for the views. Roman is packed with some of the most powerful instruments we've ever sent to space, starting with the Wide Field Instrument, or WFI. Think of WFI as Roman's main camera, and not just any camera. We're talking about a 300 megapixel monster. That's like stitching together 30 of the fanciest smartphone cameras you can buy today, all working at once. And it's not just snapping pretty pictures, it's working in visible and near-infrared light, meaning it can see things your eyes can't. With this setup, Roman will capture images with the sharpness of Hubble, but over areas nearly a hundred times bigger. Imagine using Google Earth, but instead of Earth, you're zooming into deep space with insane detail. And it's not just pretty pictures either. WFI comes with special tools called a grism and a prism. These help Roman break light into rainbows, letting scientists study what stars and galaxies are made of. It's like using a magnifying glass to read tiny letters in a book, but the letters are cosmic secrets hidden in light. To make sure everything works perfectly, the detectors in this camera are cooled to around minus 178 degrees Celsius. That's seriously cold, like colder than Antarctica cold, and it helps the telescope catch the faintest, farthest glimmers of exploding stars and mysterious dark matter in the universe. Now let's talk about Roman's other star player, the Coronagraph Instrument, or CGI. This isn't just a regular telescope camera, it's basically sunglasses for space, but way cooler. CGI's job is to block out the overwhelming light from stars so we can see the tiny, faint planets orbiting around them. Sounds easy, right? Nope. Stars are millions to billions of times brighter than their planets. It's like standing next to a stadium spotlight and trying to spot a firefly. CGI uses special masks, fancy mirrors that bend in real time, and wave sensors that constantly fix any wobbles in the system. The mirrors have thousands of tiny parts adjusting at once, more precise than you can even imagine. The goal is to block the starlight enough to finally take direct pictures of exoplanets, especially big gassy planets like Jupiter and the dusty rings that sometimes surround stars. Why is this such a big deal? Well, no telescope has ever done this level of direct exoplanet imaging in space before. If it works, CGI could open the door for future missions that might one day find another Earth. And not just find it, but take a selfie of it. Together, WFI and CGI make Roman a cosmic beast. One captures massive deep space surveys, the other works like a cosmic detective searching for hidden planets. Roman isn't just about looking at pretty galaxies, it's about rewriting what we know about the universe, while also testing the tech that's going to take astronomy into the future. Stay tuned, because it's just getting started. Now that we've talked about Roman's cameras and gadgets, let's get into 
how this whole mission even came together. And trust me, it's been a journey. Roman's story actually started over a decade ago. Back in 2010, a group of top scientists held a big meeting to decide what NASA should work on next. This is called the Decadal Survey. Think of it like a giant space to-do list that happens every 10 years. At the very top of that list, this mission. Back then, it was called WFIRST. Then, in 2012, something wild happened. The National Reconnaissance Office, basically a government group that handles spy satellites, donated a giant space telescope mirror, same size as Hubble's. That gift changed everything. Suddenly, this mission had serious muscle. NASA officially approved it in 2020. They set a budget of about $3.9 billion and planned for five years of work in space. From that point on, Roman started picking up speed. By 2021, it passed all its major design reviews. Even with pandemic delays, they kept things moving. In 2024, Roman's main mirrors were tested. In 2025, the whole spacecraft was fully assembled for the first time. Now let's get into why Roman matters. What makes this telescope such a big deal? Well, it's not just one thing. It's not because it's bigger, smarter, or better. It's because Roman is built to tackle some of the biggest questions in science all at once. We're talking about dark energy, dark matter, exoplanets, and a ton of discoveries we haven't even dreamed of yet. First up, dark energy and dark matter. These two make up most of the universe, and we barely understand them. Roman is going after both, with a massive survey of hundreds of millions of galaxies. By carefully measuring their shapes and how their light stretches as it travels through space, Roman will help map the invisible stuff out there. We're talking about the cosmic web of matter, both normal and mysterious. I mean, all this sounds so incredible. If you're a space geek like me, you were probably blown away when you saw some of the first images taken by Webb. Just imagine what this bad boy is capable of. But yeah, back to what I was saying, it's like using a huge cosmic magnifying glass to trace hidden structures we can't see with regular telescopes. And Roman's precision with measuring distances will help test if Einstein's theories still hold true across the whole universe. No big deal, right? Just rewriting physics if needed. Now let's talk about planets. Roman's going planet hunting in a totally different way. Instead of looking for shadows like Kepler or Tess, Roman uses gravitational microlensing. Imagine a star getting photobombed by a tiny planet, bending its light like a funhouse mirror for just a few hours. That's microlensing, and Roman's going to catch tens of thousands of those events revealing everything from giant planets to rogue, homeless worlds floating through space alone. It's even expected to find planets the size of Mars, or maybe smaller. Plus, Roman could catch over 100,000 regular transiting exoplanets as a bonus. And don't forget the coronagraph instrument. While it's mostly a tech demo, it's paving the way for imaging actual planets around other stars. CGI is like learning how to block out the sun so you can spot a firefly right next to it. On top of that, Roman has a whole chunk of time set aside for guest investigators. That means scientists from all over the world can pitch wild ideas and see what Roman can find, from distant exploding stars to objects way out in the Kuiper Belt. To sum up everything we've discussed so far, Roman isn't just NASA doing its thing alone. This mission is a global team effort, sure, NASA's leading the charge, but major partners from around the world are helping make Roman happen. The European Space Agency is one of the key players here. ESA is providing some of the sensitive detectors Roman will use and supporting operations with its new Norcia ground station in Australia. Plus, European scientists are working side by side with NASA on the coronagraph program, testing new ways to block starlight and hunt for distant planets. Japan's space agency, JAXA, is also on board. They're contributing star trackers to help Roman stay perfectly pointed, plus a special polarimetric module for the coronagraph. In return, Japan gets valuable science time with Roman. 
along with access to their ground station at Misasa, France's space agency, CNES, and Germany's Max Planck Institute for Astronomy are pitching in too, helping with coronagraph development and science planning. Back in the US, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center is handling the spacecraft, while JPL runs the coronagraph. Science operations, data handling, and cloud platforms are coming from STSCI and IPAC. But Roman's mission isn't just about launching a cool telescope, it's about leaving a mark. The Wide Field Instrument is set to lead huge public sky surveys, part of a project called NANCY. Picture Hubble quality resolution of space marvels, but sweeping across massive portions of the sky. This will give astronomers brand new maps of stars and galaxies, helping with everything from studying the Milky Way's history to spotting faint hidden objects. And don't forget the coronagraph. The tech at test today could be the key to future missions that go looking for actual Earth-like planets around nearby stars. Roman's work today is planting the seeds for discoveries that could last for generations. Anyway, that's it from my side. So, what do you think? Will this new telescope redefine everything we know about space? And what are some things you'd like this telescope to look at? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next time.